Hey you guys, I've been doing some soldering right there in my garage. Right, you might have seen the previous video um, which featured the Pira Micro RDS encoder failing to lock with this board here, which is a Taylor modulator. Now I ran through this with Jan and he kindly suggested that um, one of the things it might be is a list of them. Uh, which you'll see in the description but one of the things is the frequency is quite critical that the 19 kilohertz frequency generated by the exciter here in this crystal um, and then divided down to create 19 kilohertz 38 and 57 kilohertz it's, it's important that that um, frequency is actually right in the first place and it has to be within plus or minus 2 hertz would you believe so it's quite uh, quite critical that that's right obviously a PLL has only got a, a range to lock and if it was able to lock outside that uh, range although it might be actually physically possible it wouldn't be um, to broadcast standard because everything would be off frequency and outside limits so anyway here it is Pretty much as I had before, although I've got it set up slightly different to the waveforms you, you would have seen last time. The top one there, just for the sake of keeping the oscilloscope in sync, is a nice big fat sine wave, which is coming from the crystal there, divided down by the ripple counter. And then it goes across this filter here and comes out that end there as a nice sine wave. It goes into the filter as a, a graunchy old square wave. But there it is anyway, it's crawling across there. The top one, the top um, frequency, the top trace there is the raw multiplex signal. That's how it appears as it comes directly out of the Pira board. Um, and then the one below it is the 19 kilohertz frequency generated by the oscillator and summed with the RDS frequency to give that waveform. So you've basically got the 19 kilohertz generated by the uh, by the exciter board and the RDS signal superimposed on top of it created by two different oscillators now that's why it doesn't lock because of that uh, slight frequency difference between the two oscillators it's not much you can actually see it move it's not a blur but it's enough to upset things so um, yeah, this isn't the same exciter as I was showing last time. This is a different exciter, same model, same type, but it's a different example of the same exciter with actually a different um, uh, micro RDS board. I've just got another one of those to stick in there. Goes in. Uh, I've got a little uh, little Vero board there just to break things out, and uh, there's a few capacitors underneath it just to. At the various sort of uh, parameters required. Little tiny uh, USB to TTL logic and the all important flashing LED on the front. Yeah. Okay, so that's um <clears throat> that's the, the signal crawling across there. Um, now uh, there's a, a pin, I believe it's pin five. Um, which, when taken to, to ground, um, brings in the PLL function of uh, of the micro RDS board, uh, and it's switched also, also in software. It's another condition that needs to be met. It needs to be set to automatic, which actually allows the PLL to, to function rather than mono. Right, so here we are, I'm going to hit the switch now, and you can see what it does. I'll tell you what I'll do, just before I flick the switch, look at that in various different resolutions, different sweep rates, so you can see how it looks at various sweep rates. I think we'll stick with that one there. Okay, I'm going to hit the button in 3, 2, 1, and there it is, it's found it, and it's locked on. So both the 19 kilohertz and the 57 kilohertz are now in phase. 
or at least have a static phasal relationship um, because they can also be in quad but uh, there we are that's lovely isn't it so uh, it now looks like that I'll show you it off lock and locking up again there it is crawling it's walking around slowly at around I guess it's about um, just half a hertz difference so I've got it close enough I've added a, a little capacitor across the crystal just to pull it into frequency never hit the button now it goes like that Doing. and there we are don't you just love science here we go again then and we're locked one more time watch those little fishes swim across the screen or you might like to think of them as sausages whatever your proclivity there it is in lock so that's great then isn't it thanks Jan anyway for your help that's uh, that's pointing me in the right direction and achieved the desired result it's nice that everything's uh, properly in phase the IDS actually does work even if it's uh, if it's if it's not locked but uh, that's not good enough is it for a proper broadcast technician it's got to be locked and in phase and working properly